Um, so let's go for, for Mapbox. Hi, we're Johan and Daniel from Mapbox. Um, Mapbox is a geo company that does maps, geocoding, and directions. Today, we're only going to talk about directions here. If you want to talk about everything else, let's meet tonight. <laughs> For drinking beers and other beverages. We'll have the announcement in the end, but yeah, let's go to Eschenbroi when WareCamp is finished. Hi. So my name is Daniel, and today I'm going to show you the state of OSRAM. So basically, OSRAM is the open source routing machine. And it's a routing machine, it's open source, and it's actually on GitHub, so you can just clone the repo, fork it, send pull requests. And there's actually a, a real community behind it, so we have um, the issue tracker and pull requests from, from the community. And what OSRM actually is, is this, it's incredibly fast routing on a global scale. So for example, you can see the routes here, they're changing instantly, basically, depending on how you, how you drop the marker. And this basically works on a global scale, so not just in Germany or Europe, but really on the planet. And then on the right side, you can see the instructions that we create. Um, but this is done in a sort of pre-process and a sort of um, step after the route is generated. Okay. So what kind of data do, do we support? Uh, mainly we support OpenStreetMap data, which means you just take your usual planet, you extract a graph from it, then you do some pre-processing, which takes quite a while, and then you can do routing on it. But we do not only support OpenStreetMap data, but also your custom data. Um, for this, you have to basically convert it to the OpenStreetMap schema, which basically means um, respecting the max speed tags and so on, which is not too hard to do. Okay, so just a quick example of some OSRM users that are known to us because after all it's an open source project and you can just take it and go with it. Um, so Mapbox is using OSRM in their direction stack. So this is basically OSRM for business users. So if you want, if you want the support, if you want availability, and so on, you basically just use Mapbox directions. Um, Strava is also using OSRAM for the, for the routing. And so this is basically, you can see it, how they are using OSRAM for the routes. Here. It's basically like a trip plan for athletes. And until recently, Uber also used OSRM for the ETA estimation. So every time you basically, every time you um, used Uber and you got some ETAs back, they were using OSRM. And there's a blog post out there, which is quite interesting, um, in which they explain how they build their own routing engine because of their own needs, which are quite special. Yeah, and if you have a mob mobile device, and you use maps.me, maps this is actually OSRAM on your mobile phone. So the maps.me guys, they figured out how to port OSRAM on Android, for example. And then you can use OSRAM directly on your phone without any server in between, which is kind of cool. So now to some OSRAM features. Um, so this is what you get if you do this kind of a ST routing. So basically, you drop your marker at one point, you drop your marker at a second point, you get a distance back, you get a route back. Um, this works with several profiles, and the profiles are what you see on the top here. So for example, here we have driving profile, a walking profile, and a cycling profile, and the profile selects, for example, the route types that you can take. Um, you can see a park here, and the car profile isn't able to drive through the park. So this is kind of a filtering of your, um, filtering on your planet, on your upstream planet, for example. And depending on your profiles, you get different paths, you get different time of arrivals, and so on, different instructions. Um, 
what OSRAM is also able to do is elevation aware routing. For example, you can pull in your custom elevation data. You can use SRGM data, for example, because it's open source. Um, it's just available. You can pull it in, and then you can optimize your route with respect to the elevation. For example, in San Francisco, you don't want two routes over hills because you want to minimize, for example, um, the elevation here, and you get, you get like the best route, and these are the profiles right on the top, which is kind of cool. And in case you not only want to do ST queries, basically from the start to an end, but also queries against multiple sources, multiple targets, so basically a distance matrix, you can use this feature called distance tables. And this is actually, this, is a, this was a blog post by Johan about his favorite clubs in Berlin. And he used the distance matrix API to, to find the distances between basically all the clubs in Berlin. Yeah. Okay, and we actually, we heard about the traveling salesperson problem. And you can also do this using OSRM. So you can see just by by dropping down markers, we can solve the TSP problem basically instantly. Yeah. Okay, so another interesting feature is map matching. So just think about the use case. You have noisy GPS traces, for example, from your GPS devices or from, for example, Strava, when they have runners. Um, and you want to snap them to your geometry, to your network. And this is what map matching can do for you. It's trying to, to optimize, it's trying to find the most likely route for your noisy traces. And then you can snap it to the geometry. So in these use cases, they are quite um, these, this feature is quite, quite handy for use cases um, when you have noisy GPS traces. Okay, so now this was a quick overview of the basic OSRM features. And to make this scale, Johan is going to talk to you about deployment and DevOps. Okay, so as Daniel mentioned, we are running OSRM to power the Mapbox Directions product, which is the hosted solution of OSRM. And um, we basically in OSRM have uh, three steps. So the first thing is you have to procure your map data. And um, OSRM is based on the schema that OpenStreetMap gives you. So ingesting OpenStreetMap is the easy thing. If you have other map data, you can transform it to the OSRM schema. Um, we then have to process. So um, it's not possible to just use the OSRM data right away. Uh, sorry, the OSM data. This is the hard thing about OSRM. It's OSM and OSRM. And we should change the name, maybe. <laughs> it's too hard. So you have to change the OpenStreetMap data to make it uh, usable in the open source routing machine. And for this, we have to do a pre-processing step. And once this pre-processing step has generated a graph that is specifically usable for the routing, uh, we can load this into a routing server to do requests against it. So the first thing with OpenStreetMap is, the, the very cool thing about OpenStreetMap that Steve Coast can probably attest to is, every minute there's new changes. So um, you do a change, and uh, within minutes it will be available for all OpenStreetMap users in the world. We are trailing this stream, and we are basically creating a new internal planet to use every minute. Um, we mostly throw away most of the planets because we don't need them at that point. But uh, when when the pro, uh, when the um, when we want to process a new routing graph, then we just use the latest planet. So the next thing is we have to process the OSM data. So OSM is, I think, the current planet is 280 gigabytes, uncompressed XML, it's uh, 30 gigabytes as a protobuf. So we take that, we load it into um, a 
big instance. So we use uh, 16 CPUs, 122 gigabytes of RAM. Um, we run on Amazon Web Services, which support, uh, give us these instance types. Um, and it takes around six hours to pre-process for the car profile, 15 hours for the bike profile, and 23 hours for the walk profile. This is basically proportional to the amount of data that we have to be able to route on. And yeah, there's way more paths in the world than there is streets that you can drive your car on. So we process this from the OpenStreetMap data and then throw it into our API servers. We are running basically a whole stack of API servers for each of the profiles. So we have currently four instances per profile, running them in different regions, running them in different availability zones so that the API never goes down, which looking at my graphs, we're fairly good with. <laughs> um, we're using the R32X large instances, eight CPUs, uh, 61 gigabytes of RAM, because uh, we need all this RAM because we have to keep the whole world in memory. Again, we're not routing on cities, we're not routing on small geometries, we're routing the whole world. Um, the example that Daniel showed with routing within Europe, uh, we can route to Asia, we can route to China. There is maybe not a good use case for this, but um, there's definitely a good use case with the fact that we can do routing all over the world. We don't have to change for uh, geographies there. Um, the query time of OSRM is fast. So this is um, over a two week period, the average of the response times that we get from OSRM itself on the servers I just told you. And this is around 10 milliseconds. So it's milliseconds on the left scale, um, which means that it is super efficient. It is really, really fast. Um, and this, the fact that it's so incredibly fast enables us to build all these other features above it that are the distance table, the, um, solving the traveling salesman person, and building this in a way that we can also build a product around this that scales good enough that we can offer it to, for a good price. Done. Um, okay, before we go to questions, um, let's meet tonight at Eschenbräu, which is, after our ETAs, walking eight minutes from here. Um, and yeah, let's basically, when the happy hour here finishes, let's go over. Um, there is, it's possible to get food there, I guess, or you can bring food. You can bring food. Um, yeah, let's take it to questions. Yeah, thanks very much first. Hey, thanks very much for the interesting presentation. Uh, my name is Felix and I have a question about uh, car routing. So I think the most important objective for most drivers is time. So we're talking about fastest routes. And I'm wondering what kind of uh, uh, cost on the, uh, on the roads can your routing engine take into account? So can you take into account um, the fact that travel time is different over the course of a day, over the course of a week? Um, and uh, could you take into account real-time data for speeds on roads? So right now we have basically different profiles. And these profiles have to be known before the pre-processing, which means you write your profile and then do the six hour or 10 hour pre-processing. And you can write your profile in a way to penalize certain streets, for example. Um, in regards to real-time data, we are currently working on it. And there are basically two branches on GitHub right now that make it possible to do this. But it's not in a state that we can, we can ship it or it's not ready for production yet. But there are certain ways to basically um, do a trade-off between the query time. So instead of 10 milliseconds or 12 milliseconds, you go up to maybe 20 or 100 milliseconds, but then your pre-processing only takes a few minutes. And then you can, you can do your pre-processing like every half an hour or every 50 minutes, which allows you to ingest real-time data. Hi, uh, Andrew Triffin of Navi GPS. Uh, we played with the with the uh, routing, and uh, we found that it is uh, calculating uh, very few alternative routes. Say London to Paris, uh, there is just one alternative route, and uh, London to Edinburgh, there is uh, just one route. 
what is it, is, what is it related to? Why there are so few alternative routes? We compare it to our own routing, so. Yeah, so the, we're using an algorithm that's called contraction hierarchies as the basis for OSRM. And it is very much optimized for creating the fastest route. And it is very hard to find alternative routes with that algorithm. We also currently doesn't have spent much time with it. Um, if you want to spend time on better alternatives, we're happy to. Um, it wasn't something that just fell out of the algorithm easily for us. OK, thank you. Yeah, thanks for this um, next uh, session. So we have another break now. And um, sorry for this change, but I think it's very interesting to approach to discuss, discuss. We will have another session later on with other um, parts, as you've seen on the agenda. So welcome back after the break, and we continue. Thanks again.